Good morning. That seems to be the habit in these later Champions League stages. Plenty of goals yet again with both teams scoring. We saw that in the quarterfinals. Real Madrid took the opening. Let's have a look through. Vinicius Jr. 1-0 at half-time for Real. Sane and Carney getting the uh, two goals. Old Harry. And Vinicius with a penalty. A couple of penalties there, just adding a gloss to the proceedings. So all to play for in the second leg. I'm not sure what I would have done here as far as trading is concerned. It's very difficult to trade these one-off high-profile matches. All about the in-play stats. Whether you thought Bayern Munich might get back into it. Looking first half, they did deserve not to go in a goal down. Second half. Very low on shots on target, only for three each. But uh, very efficient, of course, with those penalties helping. Gentle reminder, we're very, very early in the Super Eton season, so taking any nil-nil on be a little risky. Coventry and Ipswich, Ipswich have done their uh, promotion, automatic promotion hopes. The world are good with that win. It was a must win for them. Coventry, I'm afraid, paying the price for an FA Cup run, and it could be. Uh, a fatal price. They are still eight points away from a top six berth with matches running out. All for naught in the end for Coventry, apart from a, a boost in the coffers from the FA Cup run. But this is a vital win for Ipswich. We still don't know who's going to be joining Leicester for the automatic promotion spot. Highly unlikely it would be the Saints. Uh, they've qualified for the semi-finals already. They're six points shy of third-place leads. But a great result for Ipswich. Did Coventry lead at any stage? Let's have a look. No, it was all rather comfortable. We had a draw, 64th minute. You could have arguably laid that draw in the hope uh, that it's one of those matches where they desperately need points. Yeah, let's just have a look, look at the tennis yesterday. See if there's anything you found interesting there. Looks like the big guns are turning up in Madrid late on. Daniel Medvedev. What a pity Bublik didn't win the first set. That would have been a nice play, wouldn't it? And again, these even Stevens matches, they're very difficult for us to unpack. But I think if Hercats had won the first set, I would have, I think, trusted Fritz based on his... Uh, well, just my knowledge of the player and his abilities. This was a big upset, but uh, I did warn you, Zverev, not quite mentally there. So, very difficult for me to have trusted Zverev after what he did in Munich and his words post-Munich. Obviously, something not right mentally, because he's obviously hugely talented. So, that was one I would not have played based on what I saw in Munich. You have to factor in what you see as well. Struff and Arkaratz, good stuff from Struff, winning the second set, nearly winning the third. I told you this guy's got some fight to him. You could have laid Arkaratz, winning the first set, as a later nothing. I did mention that yesterday. 24th in the world surprised me. He's been around for a while, old Struff. But an excellent performance, second set, and indeed, third set would have had a very short odds lay of Arkaratz sorted. So sometimes this tennis is about personal opinion, as with Zverev and Struff. It's just what I've noted, like I do with the football. Uh, catching off, I thought we'd gain a set as well yesterday, and he did. He got the first set, and he won. Uh, Sinner got the second and the third, so that was a good trade as well. Kaspar Rudd and Algar Elysian. Sixth against 35th. This was a bit of a shock. Uh, and now we know where to find out about injuries, thanks to Paul's words of wisdom. Scroll down to the base here. You'll see whether there's been any recent injuries. Uh, 7th of well, July 2022. So no real problems there for Kasper Rudd. Not sure how I would have played. Probably would have looked again. If you start looking at the uh, wait for the first two games, perhaps, make sure he wins his service game. 
So, oh, set two, sorry. Well, that's a good start. Algar Elysium losing his first. But how did he end up winning? Oh, sorry. Kasper Rudd lost his first service game. That's what I would look out for. If he loses his first service game, you're going to get far shorter odds of serving a breakup. And that will lower your liability if he doesn't pull it off. He did get back on parity, but didn't lead at any stage. So that's a pity. But uh, I'm formulating some kind of a strategy where I'm not going to get involved. Perhaps after the first set, just wait for the player a set down, wait for his first service game or second service game and see whether he can respond. Well, the market seemed to have got Rafa right, didn't they? 1.91. You're very, very rarely going to see that about Rafa Nadal on clay in Spain. You know why. We go back. Multiple injury concerns for Rafa. Hip and muscle in 2024. So that's the reason why you're going to get 1.91. It is a suspiciously high odds. But at no stage really... Uh, did Rafa look as if he would break Leheka? Uh, we can have a look at the stats or the point by point in the second set at least to see, again, waiting for Nadal to see whether he'd win his first service game and he didn't. So that could be a good angle. If you get involved here, a break and a serve down, your liability is, is very low indeed compared to getting stuck in and then him losing the first service game. So if the opponent is set down is the first server, that could be a good possible angle to look in. And at no stage did Rafa break. Um, he, he was even... Leheka was uh, generating a lot of break points. So some interesting matches yesterday. Swiatek lost the first set to Haddad Maya. Very nice. And Kaching, Kaching. And it looks like Madison Key's got the better, but I wouldn't have played that one. On to today's football, and it's very quiet indeed. You're highly unlikely to be hearing from me this evening. Uh, Dortmund against Paris Saint Germain. I would have a slight favouring of Paris Saint Germain here. Uh, Dortmund, if you note in the Bundesliga, they've been losing to the big guns are not performing at their best against the big guns, but Paris Saint-Germain, that lethal attack with Kylian Mbappe, could be the difference here today. But it's another one of those big, high-profile derby-style matches. I just can't give you a winner in the first leg. Uh, everything to play for. But is it going to be like we saw in yesterday's match, both teams to score? Both teams to score two goals. How many times have we seen that in the quarter-finals and now in the semis. Sturm Graz against Rapid Vienna. Possibilities here. Although uh, four o'clock kickoff and it is the cup. Italian Serie B today. I don't think it's the end of the season. We can check that out here. Sock away. Whenever you see multiple matches kicking off at the same time, it could, or could signal the end of the season proper, the last day. But these are 11.30 and then two o'clock and then five o'clock. So I doubt it. Let's just have a look at one of the matches, just for confirmation. So we go down to Serie B. Three matches remain. So the best we can do, I think, rather than plunder through all of this, first take your cues from the market. 1.8, 1.570 oh, Perry Como. And Sampdoria, 1.75. The only odds on favourites. But having a look at the standings with three matches remaining, let's just see who needs what and when. And if there's any business to finalise. Well, five-point difference for Palmer from Como. That's why Como are odds on today. Uh, a win today takes them over the precious 70-point mark. Vitally important because Venezia are breathing down their necks for that automatic promotion spot. Uh, Venezia, seven points 
well, 10 points above Catanzaro. So Venezia cannot be caught by those in pink. So I think Venezia are guaranteed a semi-final place, if my maths is correct. We're basing it on Catanzaro being 10 points shy with three matches remaining. So that should really have an arrow there to confirm. But then it hasn't got an arrow because we haven't confirmed the automatic promotion spots yet. So Venezia, plenty to play for. Try to get themselves out of the semi-final playoff places and into the automatic promotion spots. So Como, let's just get this to the right and hopefully it will trans translate. Nope, get that back. I tried this last time and it did the exact same thing. So let's see if we can find... There we go. Right, so Parma, Como and Venezia would certainly be matches of interest <coughs> today. And I might follow this uh, for you throughout the day. I'll be on Telegram if there is anything. There's no Parma match today, so it's not a full compliment. Uh, I can't see a Parma team. Como, well, they are odds-on favourite. Venezia, I've got plenty of work to do. They're not playing today either. Yes, they are. It's Catanzaro. Catanzaro themselves, uh, keen to get into that semi-final place. So that's going to be one where you can target a late lay of the draw. Three points, far better than one point with only three matches remaining. Catanzaro cannot get... We cannot reach Venezia, but they can get to Cremonese. Palermo, well, they've got three matches remaining. You add nine points to 52 and you get 61. So they could arguably be in with a shout for the top four. But their, their squabble, really, these ones in pink, is with the likes of Pisa, Citadella, Sotirol, particularly Sampdoria. Only a point or three above all of these lot. So I don't think it's worth me uh, uh, highlighting any more of these. It looks to be a very competitive uh, league, really does. And at the bottom, the relegation dogfight, five places. Two of them, I think, are playoffs. So uh, that's a gentle respite. If you're not going to get out of the relegation zone, at least you want to be 16th or 17th. But then Ascoli, Cosenza. Reggiana, Modena, Sutirol. So we've got a case of these teams here, relegation threatened and with the possibility of a playoff place. A bit like Werder Bremen at the weekend in Germany. So I think this is going to be a very competitive league this afternoon. I'll follow it on your behalf. Hopefully I can eke out a trade or two. In place stats will play a vital role this afternoon. So watch out for that on Telegram. And that, I'm afraid... Is that so? It's another quiet day. You're not going to be hearing from me this evening. I'm not staying up for a singular uh, Champions League first leg semi final. <laughs> I think you can understand why it's incredibly difficult to unpack. Um, what I would suggest possibility of both teams to score, you might want to back a 2 2 pre match just for a bit of fun uh, and see whether we get that quarter final and semi final habit continuing where both teams score. And uh, at least one scores two goals. So another quiet day today. You might want to focus on the tennis today. We can have a quick look. See if you can get in your mind with the tennis any possible angles. Well, we took on Alcaraz yesterday, didn't we? I would do the same today at this stage of a tournament. If Alcaraz wins the first set, that's the value angle. Because his odds are going to be far lower. Your liability is going to be far lower. And Rublev... He's not at these late stages of the uh, Madrid play tournament by accident. Taylor Fritz I like. I could do with Karen Dulu uh, winning the first set. Taylor Fritz has a good reputation for fighting back. Ribikina and Putin Sabo. Be careful, these two people from the same country. Two ladies from the same country. And uh, arguably, they might know each other from Davis Cup tennis. But we've got a world number four here, 1.17 favourite. We might see some fight from Putin's saver. It might be one where you're, again, like Alcaraz, a low-risk lay of the first set winner if it's Rybakina. 
should be very low odds indeed. It's just purely based on the fact they're from the same country. Similar story, Andreeva and Sabalenka, but 1.5 the favourite is giving Andreeva a bit more of a chance. Let's have a look at the rankings, 43rd against 2nd. So we've got two of the world's top four in Madrid at the moment. Those are the only matches, really, only four. I wouldn't be playing doubles. And I wouldn't be playing any challenger events either. So a quietish day all round today. I will be uh, following Italian Serie B for you throughout the afternoon. Hopefully we can dig out a trade or two. So uh, have Telegram to hand or have the notifications on just in case. But uh, please don't expect me to turn up at 2am just for one single match. Ain't going to happen. I'll gladly turn up if we've got a multiple leagues all at the one time midweek, but not for a single match. Good luck if you're trading uh, this evening. I will see you for Italian Serie B throughout the afternoon. Have a great day.